The author of the new book titled Building is, as you might suspect, a carpenter who knows his way around tools. But rather than a how-to book, this one is about developing any kind of craft and skill, along with a few hard-earned lessons for living a good life. Jeffrey Brown has that story for our arts and culture series, Canvas. An 1840s house now being restored and renewed. Everything you see on the outside of the house is brand new. Yeah. Every board, every stick, every brick, but made to look like that photograph. A 1940s photo used to guide the work on the exterior mandated by New York City's landmarks preservation rules. Whole portions of that were certainly added later than 1840. Mark Ellison is doing the best he can, but who knows if this is really how it originally looked. So is this preservation? Mm, I'm not sure. What do you call it? What is it? I mean, in my book, I call this a, a paleo facsimile because, <laughs> because, because it's got the bones. Of you have to laugh the in the world of Mark Ellison. Place. We'll do the same spacing, exact same thing. Where the design uh, demands can border on the impossible, the and the client money, expectations are off the charts. It's a bit annoying because if it's really, really, really good, it, everybody looks and goes like, yeah, of course it should be that way. I'm like, you have no idea what it took to make it look like that. Like, you have no idea what we went through to make it so the staircase just looks like, yep, tra-la-la, it's beautiful. Staircases are indeed a signature. Ellison has gained a reputation as the master builder behind some of the most beautiful and expensive homes in New York and beyond, often for celebrities and wealthy owners who don't want their names known. He's the go-to guy who can take the grand designs of architects and figure out how to actually make them. Now 61 and 40 years into his career, he's written Building, a carpenter's notes on life and the art of good work. And he means any work, not just the kind he does. One word he has no patience for, talent. If you believe talent is the main thing, you're already on the wrong track. What's the main thing? Work, effort, practice, daily, like, you know, not every day. You can take a day off once in a while, but studied ritual practice, having a good teacher, having good guides, mm -hmm. having people that can teach you how to do things without error and staying at it. I wasn't a good carpenter for 15 years. It took me at least 15 years before I decided I was a good carpenter. I was competent by 20, and then it took another 20 to learn how to do the rest of what I do now. Ellison took us on a tour of what by his standards is a rather modest project, but still an eight-figure proposition overall. Side-by-side -side townhouses in Clinton Hill. A Brooklyn neighborhood home to mansions in the 1800s, then middle and working class homes, and now again undergoing vast change amid gentrification. This is what's called the primary bedroom suite. One so right rather now quirky touch, a sinking of the Titanic scene for the primary bathroom, executed by a long list of artists and craftspeople overseen by Ellison. The idea came from the owner. When somebody really loves an idea and gets really excited about yeah. it, I will go all in to render it as incredibly as it possibly can. You so like that? I like it. The home will also feature a spiral staircase. Ellison started with a model. I have to figure out how to do it, and I have to figure out how to detail it and make sure everything's smooth and the curves, and it makes sense, and that from it looks right from the underside and the curves are good. It's going to have this sort of tornado quality to it and be kind of like a vortex stair simply because of the way the geometry on this on, on this side works like usually what I find is whoever designed this side didn't think about this side <laughs> and actually and the that's what you have to do. yeah and that's what I have to do he builds his models and does his own work in his studio about an hour north of the city in a 1905 firehouse he converted it's also where he pursues his other passion, music, the one that doesn't pay the bills. Still, he insists, developing any skill is about having the will to overcome inevitable obstacles along the way. Anybody who's really developed a real skill, if you talk to them, 75% of what they'll tell you about is the stumbling blocks they met on the way and what they had to overcome on the way to doing those things. And over time, 
Will becomes the confidence in oneself of knowing if I've set my mind to something, I can do it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can do it. Even if I've never done it before, I have, a, Will gives me the feeling that I can do this thing and I will do this thing. Mm -hmm. The creativity comes in how you build it. The creativity comes from how you realize it and how well you realize it and how you balance everything. And it's part of making it more complete and more beautiful. It's like excellent tailoring. There was a clear expectation Ellison would go to college. Both parents were professionals with multiple degrees. Instead, he chose a very different path. And he writes of the social realities of the workplace itself and who builds in America today. It's dirty. It's, it, you get hurt. I've been hurt many times. You know, carrying buckets of mortar, uh, carrying br block and concrete is done mostly by people who don't, who don't get paid a lot of money. They haven't been here very long. And most people who live in this country won't take that kind of work. If you want to know what parts of the world have the most trouble right now, those people will be on my job site in a couple of months. You can see the American class structure at work. It's right here. I mean, I've taken a lot of people from carrying brooms to actually running jobs in my career, but it's a harder thing to do for somebody who didn't have the opportunities mm -hmm. that I did. Do you have a sense that a lot of this craft, this ability has been lost? I think it's less than people imagine. You have to know where to look. There are still people that take a keen interest in this in many different fields. I mean, I know weavers. I know people who weave on hand looms. I know um, uh, people who make musical instruments that rival the great musical instruments mm -hmm. of the past. There are people that do these things, and uh, you will find most of them sort of between the cracks. Now I'm thinking about debates in this country about education. Do you wish or do you ever advise young people to go into the kind of work you're doing rather than go get their four-year degrees? First off, you have to like it. This is demanding, unforgiving, sometimes painful, sometimes dangerous work. Mm -hmm. And if one does not have a taste for it, don't do this job. You won't like it. But for anyone who has a taste for it, there's an incredible need for people now who would take that route. And I hate to tell doctors and lawyers, but those of us who get really good at this make better money than they do. <laughs> I love it. I've, I still love coming to work every day. Okay, let's look at the steps. And then it was time to get back to work. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Brooklyn, New York.